welcome back and welcome to my channel have you ever seen beautiful printed butterflies on either napkins or just on papers you know just when you've been looking through your craft stash and things like that and thought they'd be beautiful as a pendant or you know just as an embellishment for something else so I've got some of these napkins and I've got some uh, scrapbooking papers that have got butterflies on and today I'm going to show you how to make them into beautiful pendants or pieces for your bead embroidery they're really easy to do you just need a bit of polymer clay uh, some resin or some uh, clear nail varnish something just to top them off with and they're really easy to do they don't take uh, very long to do each one of them and they're a bit obsessive to do because as you can see I've been quite busy so let's get started and I'll show you how so to create these butterfly uh, pendants uh, I found these, uh, these are just napkins that have obviously got butterflies on and these are some uh, paper crafting sheets that I found at a um, at local craft store. Now in this one, uh, I think it came with, I cut out two sheets, so one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight. So there will have been ten sheets in this one so I've cut two out as you can see, I've already got some cut out of this one and uh, they're just basically just some butterflies ready for you to cut out and use in uh, your normal paper crafting but I thought I could use those to make some pendants um, and I think they were a pound from the range if you're in the UK uh, if you want to try and get hold of some of those uh, but I've already cut some of those out so you don't have to watch me doing that because that would be incredibly boring <laughs> so I've already got some of these out now when I've gone round them I've nipped the antennas off because they're just really really thin and if you really want to put some antennas in you can make some little ones out of wire and push it into the clay you know sort of mid process but I've just cut them off because I'm just wanting them like this and then I've just got a nice silhouette sort of outline for me to be able to cut around and then these are the napkins that I found obviously these are from Tesco's if you're in the UK and I think again these are a pound one pound fifty and on one sheet I've also cut some of these out already so this is just from one quarter of the sheet this little pile here um, but in one napkin you get like four sections of nine so uh, sorry not zoomed out enough uh, on each of the uh, quarters it's got the same butterflies on so in one package you've got way 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 more than you're ever probably going to need of uh, butterflies so you're probably using for something else uh, again but when you've cut those ones out if you, uh, you can nip the antennas off um, I'm just going to show you so the uh, napkins generally have two layers so I'm a little bit more now so these ones do anyway now this is one of the bottom corner ones and I wanted to show you this they've got a bit of an uh, sort of lightning embossed border on around the outside of it now what I've been doing is I've just been giving them a really good rub and smoothing, smoothing those out so those debossed uh, sort of little pinpricks that are around it that gives it that texture push back up into the normal fibres of the napkin and then it's nice and flat for us to be able to uh, use for us pendants so I've just got the majority of them out so if it don't bother you then you're not really going to see all that much of them but um, obviously it's up to you um, just, so when you're cutting them out just uh, try and stay close enough to the butterfly and then you decide whether if you want to leave the actual body on or whether if you want to create your own so you could cut out the wings individually but I've just been leaving the body on so that they're already spaced out perfectly for what well, it should be now because it's two layers I've been peeling off the backing layer once I've cut it out reason being if you, I've tried um, sort of cutting it out and pulling the back off first and I found it harder to cut out uh, than when the two layers are together so after I did that one I just decided that I'm just going to leave it all together and then peel away the uh, backing once it's just gone around the head and as you can see I've just nipped off the little antenna now if you want to put those on you just need a little, little bit of wire curl it at one end make two of them and then push them in where the antennas will go now if I wanted them on mine that's how I'd make them 
um, or you could put a little sea bead on uh, the end of a, a pin and push those in so where it gives it sort of you know the ball like eye part of the antenna if you didn't want to be curling the wire so uh, so I've got that out there now now and that's as close as I can get you in but now that it's got more of a cut edge it tends to come apart now be very very gentle with these ones if you're getting these and that's it so these ones are a lot more flimsy than the paper one you know like the regular paper ones as you can see and they've got a stronger colour depending on what you want your pendant to look like then you know that's absolutely fine but I'm going to do a few of each so um, you know we can uh, separate the difference so I'm just going to pop these over to the side and then I've just rolled out some um, female white pearl clay on the uh, thickest setting of my pasta machine and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some um, this is female gel just let me just take the top bit off and because these aren't sort of wet like what the clay is we just need to put a sort of a, a really thin layer on the top now that's just to make sure that the paper sticks down now this is the female gel I've just got it it's a little bit thicker than the um, liquid uh, female uh, the uh, actual polymer clay the translucent or the bacon bond and it, se it seems to work, grab everything quite well so uh, if you've got that then it will definitely do the job but if you haven't got this then uh, just use your regular liquid clay so let's put just turn it in that one spot and then I will take out in fact I'm going to put a little bit more on because I want I've picked the uh, largest of the butterflies now in me <laughs> go on and uh, make it more awkward for myself but never mind so once you've just you don't need to have lots on it it's just a case of something for the uh, butterfly to cling to and then I'm just going to pop that there. So I'll be holding it down and then we'll put one of the uh, napkin ones on. So we're just doing the same. But like I said, it's just something to grab hold of it. And then once it's baked, it'll be stuck to it and you don't have to worry about it. Um, you can put resin on top, which is what I'm going to do with them. Or you could just put a uh, layer of uh, clear nail varnish if you've not got any resin, you know. Or you can just leave it uh, matte if that's what you want. But I like to put the coating on. I just want to make sure that um, it's got a nice barrier on it because I don't want it to get worn away, you know, with the it being worn. So, right, let's go for, go for this pretty yellow one. There we go. Just take the other butterflies out of the way because I don't want them to get stuck where I want them. And then you just need to take find it. Craft knife. Now if you want to make things a little bit easier for yourself, just take a piece of paper and I'm gonna pop it in palm blade. I'm just gonna cut off most of this excess and then it's going to be easier for me to move around so just take one of your butterflies and pop it on the paper that way you can move it around a lot easier than you can do um, obviously you'd have to keep lifting it up and you might distort it so if we just do it that way and then we're just going to take uh, our craft knife and just cut around the outside just take your time and we can smooth out the edges once we've uh, got it cut out all together but this is sort of just giving us the, the base that we need
clear his uh, rather socks, it's quite warm in the studio today. So I'll um, try and be a little bit more cautious with it because I don't want it to tear the uh, paper. I find that if I, uh, I'm cutting this out, I'd like to cut a bit of a section off at a time so I've not got all the excess uh, pulling on the rest of the butterfly. haven't got a craft knife like this uh, you could try using your blade or the corner of your blade you know your tissue blade if you've uh, got one of those um, or a kitchen knife is probably um, too blunt a uh, steak knife might work but you know or oh, the next uh, best thing is a um, One that you use for your decorating, a <laughs> Stanley knife, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Get there in the end. Right, so I've got that off. See, now we've just got our rough edges so we can just smooth them out and then see where we've missed any bits that need to come off. You don't want to manipulate it too much and it distort the clear out of the outline of the butterfly. This is just when you want to take your time and make sure you check the, you know, the details. Make sure you've got it exactly how you want it. Because once it's baked, it's baked. You can file things off and try and cut things off, but obviously, it's better if you get it done now and then you don't have to worry about it. You just need to take your finger and just smooth those edges. Just make sure that you've got it how you want it to be. And then that's ready for baking. Now, depending on whether if you're wanting to put a back onto your uh, um, pendant, um, is whether if you want to do your, um, sort of the drilling of your holes for you to be able to string these up as a pendant, um, whether if you want to do them after the baked or before the baked, or try and decide where you want them to go. Now, if you want to do another layer, we can uh, bake this as it is and then once it's baked um, put another layer on the back of it cut it out and then you can make your uh, drill pilot holes once you've put your second layer on so I'll show you that once I've got these ones baked um, but you can also uh, choose to uh, just put some holes in here um, and here at the bottom if you wish uh, if you're not wanting to make it too heavy and um, polymer clear is is quite light but uh, obviously the more layers you put on it and if you're putting resin on it as well that can uh, add to the uh, weight of the pendant and, and if you're adding fringe and all that sort of thing so just think about what you actually want it to uh, be like and the weight of it um, before you do any other ones um, so mine I'm probably going to bake the majority of them first and then put backing on some of them I might put holes on to, at the front to start with so I can hang them differently um, but when I do put them in Got one, and probably you can either you could put a hole going that way through it, so you'd have a, like a connecting bridge here, and or you can have it going that way, or put them that way. That way. In fact, I think that should be the other way around. No, that is right, this big one. So, depending on how you're wanting to work it, but if you're wanting to use this for bead embroidery, I'd just put some tiny little holes in for you to be able to just chat out. Uh, tack it down with your thread and then you can do your bead embroidery around it so I'm going to go and cut a few of these out and get them baked and then I'll come back the butterflies are all baked now now these are the ones that were the sort of regular uh, paper butterflies down this side and these are all the ones that I cut from a quarter of the uh, napkin that I showed you so I've got a fair few to do now the next part is to just give them a cut of uh, something just to seal in at the uh, paper so it has that sort of lock around all the edges of the uh, butterfly just so that it doesn't peel off eventually uh, you know from wearing now you can either use UV resin 
which uh, is uh, a good option to do if you want to make it more domed. My test piece, if I can actually find it, I did do, oh there it is, it's hiding. There we go. <laughs> so this one, this one I put UV resin on and it's a little bit more domed. So uh, depending on uh, what effect you want to get is whether if you want, ooh, I'm dropping it, uh, whether if uh, that's what you want to do. Uh, another option is, like I've done in previous videos, just using some clear UV um, nail varnish, which is the top coat and it's uh, no wipe uh, stuff. Uh, you can use regular nail varnish as well if you've not got a UV lamp. This is just what I've got and I prefer uh, it because I can stick it under the lamp and it's uh, cured in uh, a minute. So. Just to give them a, a coat of all this, so I'll zoom you in now and you can see a little bit better. So, like I said, this just basically gives it a seal. So I'll we'll go around on this one here. I like to just go right up over the edge so the brush just goes over the edge of the um, paper or the napkin, depending on whichever you're using. Now another option for butterflies is if you've got some butterfly stamps, if you uh, do paper crafting like I do, uh, you could cut them, in, uh, stamp them and colour them in and then cut them out and use those. Uh, if that's uh, what you've got, just use whatever you've got. If you've not got any of those, you could print some butterfly pictures off from the internet if you've uh, got a printer, so that's another option. Or uh, just keep looking through what if it doesn't have to be butterflies, it can be anything really, but this is just what I would want to do because these are the napkins that I've found. So with the nail varnish, it's just a thinner coat, you don't get that domed effect. But I'm going to do all of these with the uh, nail varnish simply because then it leaves me the option whether if I want to rebake them or if I want to make it domed later on, I can add it to it. Um, because this is UV resin so it can go back in the well it's UV cure it's not resin it's the nail varnish but it can go back in the oven so and that's it so that will just give the coat that it needs just to keep it secure all the way around just try and go over the edges just make sure that it's got that seal all the way around now I've done it while well they're still on the tile because as you can see at the minute they don't shift because they've uh, stuck to the tile uh, from baking but just to lift them off I'll just use my blade but I'll show you that once I've given all these a coat so I'm going to go and give all these a coat of varnish and then I'll be back alright so these are all cured and uh, ready for me to uh, take off the tile now so you just need to take your tissue blade and just slide it underneath and they'll come off as easy as that um, it's just easier to put your resin on if you've uh, got them sort of stuck to the towel when uh, they're in one position. If you try doing it when they're, you know, they're off and you're holding it up and you can get resin on uh, nail varnish all over you and believe me, you do because I've done it. <laughs> so this is just uh, one little tip I'd say uh, if you're doing these, just keep them on the towel if you're going to put some resin on them. Now if you don't want the shininess of the um, nail varnish or the resin you can get matte finishes as well so that is up to you whether if you want to do matte or uh, shiny or whether if you want them to not have it on it's just me I just want to put that extra bit of protection on there to stop my image from coming off so I'm just going to put these to the side and get rid of my tiny now now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to back it and put some uh, pilot holes in for uh, when I'm going to be stringing them. So I'll zoom in a little bit more now for you. So I've just got a piece of my um, pearl clay again just so that it's the same as the front and I'm going to uh, put some uh, Fimo gel again on the back of my cab and spread it around and that will act as a, a glue because obviously this is baked clay and this is wet clay so you need something to work, make the balls stick together so you don't need tons but if you just make sure you get all the way around to the edges and then we'll create that seal as well because we're going to smooth it around the edge so pop that there now so the next thing would be to just 
give it a quick trim away from the larger part so I'll just do it. Now I've done this on the next setting down from uh, uh, the thickest one of my plaster, sheet, uh, plaster machine uh, and that's just so that the cab doesn't become too big. Now if you want it to be nice and chunky keep them both on the uh, thicker setting um, but because I might put resin on them eventually one day I just want to keep it as uh, as small as possible and plus it's the weight of it as well you don't want it to get uh, too heavy so let's get your piece of paper again and then I'm going to go around the outside like we did before then I can get my knife wrong one the problem with doing so many crafts as I do I've got loads and loads and loads of tools and it's finding the right one so I'm just going to work go around the edge like we did before but now this time we've got a nice hard edge that we can cut up to so it makes it just that little bit easier it might move around a bit because we've got that uh, liquid clay on or the, the gel if you're using gel same as me you can just move it back into position and it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect this we're just giving it a rough cut out and then we're going to smooth it off like we did before a piece of paper just makes it easier for you to be able to turn it around uh, from different angles So I've got that room now. But now what I'm going to do is put this on here because I don't fancy cutting myself. I'm just going to go around the outside of the butterfly and just press the wet clay into the um, baked clay and just bring it around over the edges and just smooth it out and then it will have a nice seal around it. And then when we want to put our pilot holes in, we'll go through the wet clay and then it'll be in position for what we want it to be. So, get around. And then you can also uh, just take your knife off if you don't want to run one well again. <laughs> this one. You can always trim it off around if you don't want it to have that. Just like, just like that. So, uh, it's, it's easy done, but... Um, if you can manage to get it to have a, a good seal all the way around then you know, that's that's all added to security in my eyes so you know. and plus it's the same colour, that's why I've stuck with the same colour because I thought well when it bakes it's going to be the same anyway so then if you need to sand any bits off god forbid you've got to uh, do any sanding because I hate it I've tried sanding things in the past and it just never turns out how I want it to do. <laughs> I mean there's some people that can do absolutely amazing jobs with sanding and you know buffering pe pieces up but I'm not one of them <laughs> so I, I just do the ones that I can do. Just take your time on it. <coughs> Excuse me, my voice decided to go for me then. I must chain it all the way around. The more you smooth it out, the more even it's going to be. Uh, depending on what you're going to do with these, if you were just using them purely for uh, bead embroidery, so say if um, you want to uh, stick this down to a piece of felt and do some beading around it, you don't really need to put this extra layer on. You could just put some holes in when you put the um, transfer on. Uh, just so that you've got some little pieces in that one you don't need to make it any thicker I'm doing it like this because the majority of these are going to be uh, cabs for necklaces I think I might leave a few just for beading roller just in case I uh, change my mind I can always add to it 
uh, afterwards. But again, that's something I can decide when I want it. Uh, another thing you can use if you just want to, uh, if you've got a knitting needle like this, this is a good one to do. But I like with my fingers because it gets the warmth off uh, my hand and it sort of uh, moves the clay around a little easier, I find. For doing this sort of thing anyway, when uh, you're doing it up against baked clay. Okay. Right, so if you wanted to put any antennas into this, this is where you could pop them in, in between the two layers of uh, clay. Like I said earlier, you could uh, just get a short piece of wire, turn it into a V and curl over the ends and then you've got a little um, antenna for your butterfly and you just pop it in there, make sure that you uh, give it a good coat of um, liquid clay as it's going in or you can use the um, nail adhesive that I've used in previous videos before. Uh, you know the rhinestone adhesive and uh, just give it that extra bit of uh, security but I'm not putting uh, antennas on mine because I'm going to be beading with them um, but what I want to do now is I want to put some holes in it so that uh, I can bead with it eventually and I will use my... I can find it I've got several poke tools going on over here so you can decide on which way you want to um, skewer your beads so you can either go from side to side and go all the way across and then you'll have a little bit here where you can bead uh, and then you can do the same at the bottom or you can go that way so it's from top to bottom so like when you do, if you're doing a necklace you come all the way down and down to this bottom piece and same from the other side um, I wouldn't uh, say going to just straight down the middle if you were doing a necklace because it'll just spin um, you're better off having it so it's anchored at both sides so that uh, you know it, it's not continuously moving. I know I'd, be, I'd get frustrated with it if it was just going all over the place. So what should we do with this one? Um, right, I think I might actually do that one going across to there. So I'm just going to take my needle tool and just sort of feel where the baked clay is and just push it through just like there and gently pull it back out and as you can see we've got a nice pilot hole and I'm going to do the same on the other side so if you want to try and line them up a little bit or if you just take something that's straight and you use my blade pop that across you can do it by eye if you want but I'm just showing you another way that you could do it. So I'm just going to make a little mark where that one is. Okay. Take that one off. And then just put your fingers either side of it so then you can feel whether if the needle tool is going to be coming through the clay and just come across. That. Whoop. Try not to drop it, and then I'm going to do the same on this one. Uh, if you've got something long enough to skewer both sides in one go, then you know that's an added uh, bonus. But this one's quite short, so I'm just going to. Done that one a bit too high up for the end. That's it, come a bit further down. If you do a mistake, you can just easily do that and then go, uh, go back through it. There we go. So I've got that one on that side. And we'll go across to this again. Mark. And just come across. That one's a little bit higher up, so let's fill that little hole back in, smooth it round. There. It's a bit 
one of it, I don't want it. And then going from the other side, it sort of just pushes those what calls craggly bits back in so they're not sticking out. And then just go around and see if you've smudged anywhere, which is quite possible you can do that because obviously you're holding on to the butterfly and um, you're pushing into it so it can distort it. So don't worry about it, you can just go back and put it back into place and then wipe the finer bits. I'll just use this. My little pudgy fingers are not narrow enough to get in uh, there just to do that fine bit. There we go. So that one is screwed ready for uh, feeding. Now, like I said, this is probably going to end up being in a necklace piece or something like that. I'll be able to do fringe from the bottom and uh, just go straight across from the top when I might put it on the main necklace. There's lots of different ways that you can do it. Now, one of the uh, butterflies that I did is this one. It's quite black, as you can see. Oh, if you can just about see, I've just put some holes going down here as a pattern. And that I'm going to keep as one for bead embroidery. So I can come up through these holes and use a little tiny coloured seed bead. And then that will add some added dirt colour to it. Because obviously this is quite a, a dark butterfly. I want to have some colour in my butterflies. I don't want them to be uh, too dark. So that's what I've just done then. I've just made sure I've done the same amount of holes on either side. So that, um, you know, obviously it mirrors each side. Because that's what butterflies do. Um... Another thing you could do is you could just uh, drill a hole from each uh, point of the butterfly. Just hold it down if you are doing bead embroidery on it. Or if you don't want it to uh, be any thicker than this, you just want it to keep it as the thin layer. And maybe put some resin on top. Then you can uh, just skewer your butterfly wings from side to side here. Just like you would, like we've done on these ones. On this one, sorry, that I've just showed you. And then I would uh, just do it the same, but obviously your clay is going to be a little bit thinner, so it just take a little bit more time at teasing your uh, needle through uh, just to make those holes. So I'm going to go off and I'm going to make some uh, more backs on these uh, butterflies, and I'll come back once they're baked. Okay, so I've got some of my butterflies backed. So as you can see, it's just got that nice seal all the way around, and I've got some of my pilot holes in where I want to put them. Uh, I put it back on this one. This was the uh, test piece that I showed you. I decided to put it back on that one. And I did a few of the little ones as well. So as you can see, it can go quite chunky when you're uh, putting uh, the backs on as well. So depending on what you want to use them for is, you know, whether if you want to put the backing on. Uh, I've left the uh, majority of them without a back on. So I can decide later on whether if I want to use them for bead embroidery or whether if I do want to put a back on and use them as a pendant. So there's different ways that you can keep them. You can drill your holes to start with or just wait until you're actually um, going to use them and then you can decide where you want to put your holes there and then. That one I decided just to put the holes in uh, straight away because obviously it's got quite a lot of black in and uh, I want to put some uh, coloured seed beads through it as I explained earlier. So I hope you've enjoyed that and uh, it's given you some ideas of uh, things that you can uh, use with your polymer clay to make some nice butterfly pendants. If you've got any questions then uh, pop them in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. And if you like the video, if you could give me a thumbs up, that'd be appreciated. And if you've not subscribed, if you consider subscribing, that would be appreciated too. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!